This one doesn't seem to be nearly as happy. Come on. Handle them as gentle as possible in hopes that without sudden movement that they'll kind of chill out. Wow. Guys, so I am doing something that is always a difficult task and that is, of course, is sexing the king rat snakes. Now this albino here is actually opaque and is actually in a really good mood, but these guys are just out of hibernation and we always wanna go back and just make sure that they're males or females so that way we know what to pair up. This one happens to be a female and she is super calm, but I have six other ones that typically aren't quite as placid as she is, so let's see how we can do. Okay, here's another albino, guys. And again, these guys can get pretty whippy at times, but thankfully, they seem to be in a pretty good mood. And all I have to do with these guys is actually tail sex them because the male's tails will be much longer than females. You can see this is a really rapid taper in a pretty short tail. So once again, it's a female and uh, I didn't get bit. So I think they're going along swimmingly so far. All right. And look at how amazing these are. These are a big colubrid snake. I mean, these guys can sometimes literally get well over seven and a half or eight foot. This right here is a male, and you can see how long that tail is, and see how the taper of the tail after the vent is much more gradual. You can kind of see that. So this is a male, and once again, these guys are in an unbelievably docile mood today, so maybe I'll get lucky. A couple more to go. Come on, little buddy. Oh. This one doesn't seem to be nearly as happy. Come on, come on, little guy. I'm just trying to do what's right here, bud. It's okay, okay, Ooh, okay. And again, these guys are unbelievably whippy and you just gotta really kind of handle them as gentle as possible in hopes that without sudden movement that they'll kind of chill out. Wow! And I guess that didn't work out so well. This happens to be a female. Okay, okay, girl, go back in your cage. Please let my hand go before you bite me. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I have my first leaking of the day. Couple more to go. And this is my first normal king rat here. Whoa! Shoosh. Woo! And you can see, I mean, the normals are actually really beautiful. I love the albinos, but to be honest with you, this is one of those species where the normals may actually be prettier than the actual albinos. That's a female too. So, so far we've got all females, but one male. Come on. Oh boy. Ooh, come on guy. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, this is tough. Come on, little buddy. Come on, come on. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I think I got him now. Come on, come on, come on. You're all right, you're all right. You're okay, you're okay. Whoa. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. I just want to get your tail. Please, 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 please. Calm down, calm down. You're all right. And again, if you just kind of handle things calmly, oftentimes you're okay. But this guy's not cooperating really well. All right, that's a short, quick taper tail. That's another girl. So, so far, we've got all girls and only one male. I thought we had one more male, so we're down to our last king rat. Let's see what happens. And this is another albino here. So far, the albinos, with the exception of that one, have been pretty placid for me, so not too bad. Let's see if this one's a boy. That's a girl, too! Oh my gosh, we have a lot of females, people. So we've got one male, and I think there was six females, five or six females. So that's not exactly the best ratio, but uh, it's a great way to start the day. I hope that you guys are having an absolutely amazing day too. So welcome to the vlog. Jessica's handling slightly more docile animals, and the fact that you've got to do the gargoyle geckos, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so what are we doing today? Um, I'm misting them down. I mist them down every day, like okay. once a day, okay. and then uh, I'm feeding them. I've already got their food mixed up. Okay, so what what exactly is this? This is a Pangea complete diet with um, insects mixed into it already. Oh, that's so I don't awesome. have to put crickets or anything in there. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. So you just mix that up and then yep. they get that. And then how often do you change that? I do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then they just have these little holders right here where the food goes here, the water goes here. You can see they've got foliage. They've got some places to hide. There's a little gecko in there. Hello, little gecko. And here's another one right yeah, here. I'm switching the food out. Switching the food out. I actually got a mist first. Do a little misting. Food and the they're food all in. set. 
And that's it. Okay. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the things that's great about crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, you know, chihuahuas, all that stuff is they're actually pretty simple to keep. And the fact that they don't need high heat, as a matter of fact, they prefer to be a little bit cooler. That's why we keep them where they're at now. They're at about 78 degrees, which is the perfect temperature. It's really awesome because you don't need a bunch of expensive lighting on them and stuff like that. But uh, it's a, such a good animal. And hopefully we'll have some babies, right? Oh, it's gonna take forever though. They take like 90 days to hatch. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not patient enough for that. No doubt that the one thing that's the most impressive thing when people come to visit me is handling the big snakes. But the one thing that I get asked all the time is like, what are the protocols, the do's and don'ts of handling a big snake? The first thing is, you can see when I have Daisy on the ground here, it's pretty easy to just kind of control her and I don't have all of her weight kind of wearing me out and just kind of running around like crazy. And she's a great animal. She is a little bit in Energetic, but at the same time she's super easy to handle. Really handling big snakes is mainly about reading the animals because even Daisy has her days where she doesn't seem to want to be handled. So reading them is so important. If you don't have a lot of experience with big snakes and you want to handle big snakes, I really encourage you to be around someone that's really in tune with them. So not only can they can maybe give you a few pointers as you're handling them, but then you know that it's safe. I'll be honest, the two guys that I think are kind of the best at handling or reading big snakes are Kevin McCurley at Nerd and Jay over at Prehistoric. As a matter of fact, just recently I spent some time with Jay and even after all the years I've been handling big snakes, which is almost 30 years, he gave me a few pointers I thought were really interesting. He said with reticulated pythons, if you're handling them and they start bucking you, make sure the head is going forward because if it's not going forward, uh, it might be coming back and biting on you. And Kevin McCurley once gave me a really great tip. It was basically if a big reticulated python wanted to come back on you and potentially even kind of in a position where he thought you'd bite you go kind of reverse it so as it's coming you circle around and circle around and it kind of kind of spins itself out of the situation you don't do it really fast but I'll kind of give you an idea so say Daisy was coming at me this way basically what I want to do is spin around like this to keep her going the other way so that way she now is pointing the other way. You see how it was? She was coming this way, and as soon as I spun, now she's going that way. Now another thing that a lot of people will talk about, and I truly do believe this too, is it's always best with big snakes to not put them around your neck, kind of what I'm doing right now. Now if you know your snakes really well, and you can read them well, it's something that you can definitely do. I mean, let's face it, we've all had these cool wanker shots with us holding a really big snake like Daisy or Lucy. Being like, oh my God, how cool is that? But again, as a standard practice, having around your neck is probably not a good idea and certainly not a good idea unless you have someone else with you so that if something does happen, they can help you out. Essentially, these snakes aren't trying to hurt you for the most part, but they are hanging on like you're a tree. And sometimes if they don't feel completely secure, they're gonna tighten up really tight. And that's kind of the whole thing. These guys are super strong animals. So if you don't have a good read on them, you can kind of panic a little bit because you're like, oh my God, that thing is really, really tight on me. But if you do something like this and just kind of keep her up like this and not around your neck, that might even be better for you until you get a good handle on it. And you can know where the kind of boundaries are with a big snake like Daisy or Lucy or any big reticulated python or Burmese python for that matter. These guys are typically gentle giants and are just amazing animals. It's just a matter of about it experiencing, reading them, and the best way to do that is to get around someone that's been working with the big snakes for many, many years, and hopefully they can kind of give you some tricks of the trade, you can get some experience, and then you can enjoy these amazing, amazing big snakes. Why do you get a hold of her all the time? She likes me better. She loves me the most. That's just not true. That is true. Look at the way she's fighting you. <laughs> she's not fighting me. Zuzi, Zuzi says she loves her the most. <laughs> <laughs> she wants me to hold her. I don't think so. Come on. Okay, the only way to do it is to do the test. Okay, what kind of test? The test. Okay, let's do the test. Let's go. The test is, me and my mom are going to sit in the aisle way, separated. My dad's going to have Phoebe in the middle, and whoever she comes to first is the one she loves the most. Okay, you guys ready? Phoebe, here, Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. Oh. All right, best two out of three. That's not, <laughs> you, I feel like you kind of intercepted her. Really? I you feel like she looked at you and went, nope, and came exactly. right to me. All right, best two out of three. Phoebe, 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 Phoeb
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good girl. Good girl. Oh wait! Yeah. What? <laughs> I know. That's okay. You can throw more. Beep 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 beep. Doesn't care about him. She wants the tortoise food. <laughs> oh, hey guys, I'm sure as you know. I wear a lot of hats in the business and one thing I do is I like to walk around and, and just go through everything and make sure that everything is going good and that people are doing their jobs properly, animals are being taken care of properly. I mean, they always are, but I still have to do my job. So today I want to check through the razors. Since Eric has taken them over, I want to make sure that, you know, how they're looking, see how they're doing and if he's doing a good job or not. So I'm going to share some of them with you. This guy is actually really cool. This is a lavender cow king. And and I tell you what, it's grown quite a bit since the last time I've seen them. And honestly, they're one of my favorites of the Cow Kings because uh, they have that really cool purple color. And this one's pretty dark too. All right, oh wow, this one's even bigger. This is a mosaic Cow King. These guys are also very cool and striking and peeing all over me. <laughs> but that black and white with that really cool mosaic pattern, hence the name, is very cool. Yeah, these guys are really putting out a lot of size. Eric's doing a really good job. Here is a candy cane stripes corn, and this one is huge. It obviously is eating very good. Uh, beautiful animal. I'm really excited for a lot of these to get up to size. So obviously we won't have babies this year from them, but if he keeps it up, we'll be able to hibernate them this winter and produce them next summer. Look at this beauty. The orange on this guy is so vibrant. This is actually an albino reverse ochre tea because an albino ochre tea has a lot more white with the red and then the reverse obviously has more of the orange and this thing is gorgeous. I tell you what, uh, I'm pretty excited for these ones we have coming up. Next breeding season, we're gonna have a lot of really cool stuff. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here and tomorrow I am so super excited. I have my buddy Stuart come in, the guy that's going to do all the naturalistic backdrops for the entire zoo. So we're going to be brainstorming on how to do it and then we can get the construction started right after. This is the last thing that I needed to do before I can start construction. So next week we should start building some things out. I cannot wait to take you guys on this journey. It's going to take me a couple months to probably finish it, but it's going to be awesome and we're going to have a great time together. I hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day evening, morning, whenever you happen to be watching me. Your support means the world to me and I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on? If you don't have that bell turned on, you don't know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I am gonna see you guys tomorrow. And now you make me smile, oh yeah. And how you make me smile, oh baby, how you make me smile, smile more.